It is such a beautiful evening for a care collab. Welcome to the care collab of Banda Falcata. I like to say Neo Phoenicia Falcata, but here we are at night because at the moment this is my favorite space because of the fragrance of this orchid. I am in my blooming alley. I am completely, totally, and utterly distracted, but this is the time of night that the Van der Falcata just blows my mind. My senses are on overdrive. Her fragrance permeates the blooming alley at this time of night. It is past midnight, yes. <laughs> The intro is a little bit longer because I want to tell you about this fragrance while I'm experiencing it and not having to close my eyes trying to recollect it. So think of heady perfumey jasmine. Add a little note of industrial citrus to that. There is a hint of citrus, but it is more on the industrial side. It doesn't smell like lemon, not to me anyway. And then open your mouth and inhale and you can taste the fragrance on your palate. It is insane. It's like one of those fancy restaurant desserts that you then eat and there is something, there is a note, there is like rose water or lavender water or whatever they put into those fancy desserts that we aren't really able to replicate at home. When you inhale, you can actually taste the fragrance of the jasmine. And that is why I wanted to open up my Van der Falcata Care Collab at night. Promise to see you in daylight. Up next. Good morning and 10 days later. <laughs> this is what is left of my blooming of the season 2023 from my Van der Falcata. It happens very, very quickly. I only get approximately four days when all 10 spikes were looking pristine. But I hope that you enjoyed the fragrance profile of this Van der Falcata just to get a sense of the fragrance with the night atmosphere to boot. However, she might have finished blooming, but oh, I have something to show you. Something I have not featured in my Van der Falk Carter Care Collabs ever, but I'm going to leave that to the end, seeing as it's not exactly the species. I have three others that I would like to update you on, for lack of a better term, the speciality Falcatas. This is my Goja Fukurine right here. It's a very, very slow grower. And since I potted her up in Ceramus, at least, at least she's growing, well, she grew two new leaves in the past year and a half. However, what has me really concerned, even though she is in semi-hydro and Ceramus, which is highly water retentive, lots of humidity around her, the two new roots that she started to grow have stopped growing and that's why I put some sphagnum moss on there. Everything about this orchid is slow and to be honest with you, with all the specialty ones that I have, with the exception of the Shuteno, if you don't have the ideal climate, it is a real struggle to get these to grow a little quicker, a little stronger, a little better. I have had this one since 2018. Can you believe it? And this is all I've got to show for. But she's never really failed for me. It's just that she is very, very slow out of the gates. The roots in the pot, though, are alive. And that is important. At least we've got that. Even though it is a real nightmare trying to get these roots to grow on this orchid. So every orchid I'm showing you from here on in, with the exception of the classic Falcata, still live indoors very very bright light but also during winter do they live indoors my Fakata doesn't she stays outside all year round and what a pleasure that is and if i can ever get these Falcatas to be strong enough of course they would be living outdoors as well but now is not the time this is kibana very very long root system just two but they are also still alive still functioning and I'm happy to report, even though it doesn't look like there's been much progress, <laughs> but I'm happy to report that because the roots are functioning, the leaves are now getting bigger. And thankfully, she's working on another leaf, but the little side fan is taking forever to develop. Also, a slow grower, but at least the long roots that are in the pot 
that were initially aerial, which I then started to transition into being able to be in a water retentive media by having them in a container with water consistently, they did not fail. And for me, ooh, that was a leap of faith. And I'm very happy to say that I do feel I see a little bit of branching on that one root. Fertilizing on these little ones is 100 parts per million, no more. There is more flushing going on than there is fertilizing at this point in time. Maybe that is also a contributing factor to the fact they're growing so slow. But if roots start to grow out of the base, I do not want any salt buildup at all on the surface of the media. As you can see with my Shutano here, this one almost, almost failed. Thankfully, it is a more vigorous one of the three little ones that I have. It produced a beautiful side fan to save itself because there was crown rot in here. I used to mist these a lot. I don't do that anymore. There's no misting going on. But you can see how roots have failed as well, which is very, very concerning. So she has a layer of sphagnum moss also to support a little bit more humidity around the leaves. And yes, speaking of leaves, forgive me for the dust on them. I do not jiggle them around. There was active root growth up until a couple of weeks ago and only one made it. And it looks like it may be failing because this is also starting to get a little bit wrinkly. But there is at least some hydration happening because I've put sphagnum moss at the base here as well. Shutano did bloom for me the first season she was with me, but I would say that came because of the nursery's care, not because of my care. Since then, she hasn't bloomed for me. And Shutano is also an OG in my collection. <sighs> at least she's alive though. And at least the older roots are in the ceramus and they are doing their job. I'm just not able to troubleshoot and get around the fact that my new roots fail. Now, yes, I live in an extremely dry climate. That could be a contributing factor as well. But with ceramis in a small pot and semi-hydro, the media is never allowed to go dry. I would have expected better results. Still, I am not changing the setup on these at all. So fertilizing, very reduced at 100 parts per million. Calcium, magnesium, also very reduced at 100 parts per million. I do add some seaweed to that, probably about 50 parts per million. While this one gets flushed on the daily because I missed it, just like any other orchid that is vandacious in my collection on the patio during the summer months, gets a lot of misting. That is the flush and the reservoir is filled with about 200 parts per million of fertilizer all the time. As and when I see the lackluster resting color of the leaves change into a little bit more of that beautiful, inviting, bright green as the orchid wakes up. And when she starts growing her root tips, that is the sign for me to go in. It is time to help her out and provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner in form of regular flushing. And every time the reservoir dries out, it's either fertilizer or calcium and magnesium. Seeing as she can live outside during the winter, of course, the weather takes over. If it's going to be a persistent pouring rain, I take her out of the mask, but she stays outside no matter what is getting thrown at her, the lowest being five degrees Celsius. In my climate, the roots stop growing when the orchid starts blooming. During the warmer months of the year, which is now July through August, the roots probably won't start growing again. Then there'll be another little flush in September where roots may extend or start branching, but they very, very quickly peter out as well because then we're heading into fall and winter and the orchid goes back to resting phase. I have to tell you that throughout my winters, I struggle a lot because of the cold temperatures. So to have an orchid that can handle my outdoors and then see root tips starting to form as we head into early spring, it lifts my heart <laughs> because that is the sign for me that she knows more than I do while the temperatures are still cold for me. She is waking up. So I do miss her fragrance at this stage. The blooms aren't that fragrant anymore, but <laughs> well, let me go get them. Two premieres happening in this care collab. One is the fact that I'm featuring my Vandaka Stylus Lucneries. 
I've never featured them in the care collab before because I don't like to make my videos so lengthy and I have several, you know, as you just saw, Van der Falcatas to talk about. However, in care collabs, it is also a good idea to have the immediate parent in a hybrid to see how it performs with another parent. What are the results? Van der Kostylis Lucneries are a hybrid between the Rinko Stylus and the Van der Falcata, but you can see how strong the Van der Falcata is with the result. So the second premiere is that my Van der Kostylis Lucneri is in bloom with three spikes for the first time. And speaking of hybrids, the Care Collab participants have also got hybrids of Van der Falcata in their videos. So the links to their channels are down in the description if you would like to see more varieties that has a parent of Van der Falcata in it. I lost all my large Vandas. And let me just say, I got a bit ahead of myself. The Vandas were growing great. They outgrew my conditions. I couldn't keep up. And then there was a other hat trick of errors that came all in one season. And it was a pity to lose them all. But if you are limited for space, and that is why I'm going to direct you to other channels in this care collab, if you're limited for space and you want to grow Vandacious orchids that do not outgrow your space or your environment, let me tell you the hybrids that have Van der Falcata as their immediate parent is incredible. The varieties are amazing. And on top of that, you get that gorgeous fragrance that I started this video out with. With the exception that my Lucneri is super duper fragrant during the day because of the Rinka Stylus parent and extends all the way into the night because of the Van der Falcata parent. The fragrance is exactly the same as the Van der Falcata and now with three spikes, <laughs> you can imagine <laughs> what a delight it is to have the warm summer breeze at night come in through the open patio doors and ooh la la, it is delicious. So you get the best of both worlds when it comes to any kind of Van der Kostylis. I got my loose Neary back in 2018. The main fan was pretty small, but she has been a reliable bloomer year in, year out. And the main fan also gives me two spikes. So this being her first spike, I can expect another spike probably in September, mid-October, which is wonderful. She has since then grown this second fan, which was a first time bloomer last year in 2022. And here we are back with her next spike. First time bloomer for 2023 is her third fan. So here we are. The trio is complete. This orchid gets treated like any other bare root orchid, even though she's in a basket with lava rock. I have the lava rock in there to amplify humidity around the leaves. Same thing as with my semi-hydro setups that I'm trying to achieve with the other ones. She, however, does not live outdoors all year round and neither do these two. Let me just scoot you over. These are one and the same orchid, but in two different setups. This is also Van der Kostylis Lucneri, but blue, as they say. She's my little weirdo, but I'm having fun growing her. I never get perfect blooms. But when these bloom, the fragrance is, I mean, triple, quadruple that in potency compared to my proper Lucneri. So I've got my semi-hydro setup and both pieces are doing well. I decapitated the orchid that is in the basket. That is the original over there. Decapitated her because I thought there were issues because the blooms weren't coming out normal. Anyway, it's a whole thing. I'll link some videos in the description if you want to peruse to see the history of how I came about the fact that this orchid is going to stay in my collection COC, even with her weirdo little blooms. I do sometimes live in hope that maybe maybe she'll grow out of it but for the time being all she's doing is growing vegetatively she blooms ironically around january february which is bizarre because she's also a van der Kostylis, lucneri but i do appreciate the fact that the semi-hydro one is growing really well and i also appreciate all the beautiful burgundy root tips that are still active because she has a lot more humidity here the one in the basket also has some active root tips, but they're pretty targeted based on where they find themselves. So normally she would also stop growing her roots, but a lot of misting, even the one in the semi-hydro here gets misted several times a day. I want to counterbalance the warm, dry winds. 
All these larger ones are now getting 300 parts per million of fertilizer every day on the first misting, and then their flushes are my regular misting of boosting humidity, which is just plain RO water. But this, this has me, oh, this is a basket of goodness. It's really, really interesting. I did try one winter to leave them outside because of course they've got Van der Falkata in them. They should be able to handle cooler temperatures. And I got schooled very, very quickly in the fact that the Rinko Stylus parent is much more predominant. And that is a warm to hot grower. None of them appreciated the low cold temperatures and they showed their cold stress by coming up with anthocyanin on the leaves where they shouldn't be. During the summer months, the light requirements of these orchids, they can go as high as you can without burning the leaves. In my climate here in Southern Spain, I have to be careful. So they are in super duper perma bright shape shade and I do panic a little if I were to forget because normally the baskets are hanging on the west side of the patio and they are in the bright shade up until about 1 32 p.m and if I get carried away with something then they are in full hot sun which I really try to avoid and so far I've managed to keep that timing on top and then they go into the blooming alley where they can hang out until I put them back over there at night for the next day. I don't want to be burning any more Van der Kostylis Lusneri lesson learned back in the day. And yes, I have to bring them inside, unfortunately, during the winter, but I do test their limits all the way down to 10 degrees Celsius, just because there has got to be a little bit of something from the Van der Falkata that would allow me to extend the lower temperatures a little bit more, because bringing orchids in and out during the winter months, it gets old really, really fast. So the ones that can handle lower temperatures than I am comfortable with, they do have to stay outside but while we're at it i just want to show you and if you're still here thank you so so much for watching just want to show you the impressive progress of this what was the mother plant she is going absolutely bananas i've just been noticing that and they've got 300 parts per million every single day and she is absolutely loving it so that pretty much wraps up my update here for the Van der Falkata Care Collab. Again, all the channels that are participating will be in the description if you would like to see more cute hybrids than I have here. Know that in hindsight, I would have gotten more Vandacious hybrids that have Van der Falkata in them, invested my money in the smaller ones as opposed to going with the larger ones, which I eventually lost. And if you're looking for speciality falcatas, I highly recommend the Chutino because it is so much more resilient than all the other ones that are somewhat variegated and could cause issues very, very quickly. They do not recover well after they've had some stress. They cannot cope with the shipping stress very well either because normally you would get them as a single fan, as you can see with my three. They are super slow growers, a single fan after shipping, sometimes dead roots, and on top of that, high priced I would advise you to do the research make sure you can meet the conditions a hundred percent before investing in some speciality falcatas that cost a fortune and not because you've made a mistake or anything like that the whole shipping stress their slow growth one could say the recovery is almost impossible know that you can ask any questions in the comments even just say hi if you have come over from another channel didn't know my channel watched my video Thank you so, so much for clicking on the video. I sincerely hope you like what you saw and I hope you stay. And finally, thank you to all the participating channels for your videos. It's always fun to get a good gaggle of the Care Collab crew together. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care, bye.